we have a Kickstarter going on uh, for The Magpie, Volume 2. Um, it is a horror comic about a lesbian love triangle with an elder god. So if that sounds like something you'd like, please consider supporting the Kickstarter. Um, we've got lots of merch. We're printing Volume 2 with a cool new cover um, and reprinting Volume 1 so you can get a hand... get... so you can get your hands on either if you're interested. Um, there is a link in the description down below. Go check it out. It's going until early June. So yeah. Also, I'll be at Anime North at the end of May. So if you're going, please come say hi to me. I'll be in the Pro Plaza. Alright, on to the video. <laughs> so as you can see, I am drawing um, coyotes and koi wolves. Um, koi wolves being the babies of coyotes and wolves. Um, and they're super cute and I love them. So today I wanted to talk about furries. Um, I used to secretly love furries. I didn't want to admit it to myself because there was this like weird taboo where like people who like furries were considered weird and like all my friends would laugh at them and like I wasn't into like the fetishy furry art. But like now that I am an adult and I can form my own opinions without worries about peer pressure, I love furries and they're adorable and they're great. And I'm making a comic about furries now. <laughs> it was funny because I remember all my friends saying that like, oh, furries are gross and weird. And then Zootopia came out and everyone had their Zootopia sonas and yeah, joke's on you. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, furry art is super cute. Uh, for the past year or so, I've been learning how to draw, like, um, anthros and furries and animals in general. I used to be really scared and trepidatious about drawing animals, uh, growing up. Like, um, cause I got into art through, like, anime and manga, and I was like, oh, I don't really want to draw animals, like, I just want to draw cute anime people. Um, you know, I'm no good at drawing animals, it's really hard, I might as well just, like, focus on humans, which I'm good at drawing. I wasn't good at drawing them, by the way. <laughs> but <laughs> I thought I was. So yeah, I put off drawing animals for the longest time, and still, until I started getting into, like, life drawing, and actually built those foundational skills so I can draw, like, from photographs or from real life or whatever, um, cause before I used to really rely on, like, symbols and, like, how to draw books and stuff, which is a good starting point, but, like, I always found the how to draw books confusing. Like, you draw, like, two circles, and then the next step would be, like, you have, like, a wolf that's already rendered out, and you're like, how did I get to that point? <laughs> um, so yeah, so now that I have a bit more of, like, a, an art skill set, I feel a lot better trying to draw animals, and it's been going pretty good, I, I hope, but yeah. Growing up, um, I really liked a lot of furry artists, um, secretly, <laughs> but I was never into, like, sorry, I'm jumping around here. So as a little kid, I was never into, like, horses and ponies and stuff, because I know a lot of, like, a lot of my friends were, um, but yeah, I just never was, but I loved wolves and big cats, um, and I think I know why I really liked wolves. <laughs> And it's totally because of Princess Mononoke, because, like, that was my jam growing up. I remember when I was five, I first saw that movie, and, like, the opening scene where, like, the big demon attacks, I screamed and cried the whole time. But then, like, the next time the movie was playing, I was like, no, I want to watch it again. <laughs> so maybe that, like, developed my love of horror and cute wolves. <laughs> So yeah, so I loved wolves, and I loved big cats just because, like, I love cats, and who wouldn't love, like, a giant version of a cat? Even though, like, tigers and cougars and lions and stuff, they're very different from, like, domestic cats, but, like, they're cute. They sit in boxes. When you give them boxes, that's the best. <laughs> so recently, I have been learning to, to love, love the part of myself that loves furries, because, like... Come on, who didn't love the Disney Robin Hood where he's a fox? He was adorable. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyways. So I've been doing a, basically like a crash course on how to draw animals by just like getting photos and trying to draw them as best I can. And then I've started to notice like patterns between how different animals 
look. Um, admittedly, I've been like sticking to Canadian wildlife, and that's because uh, my comic, The Scourge of Nine Point, um, all the all the species in it are based off Canadian wildlife. So I've been so I've been noticing a lot of like similarities between the different species that way, um, and between like you know different mammals. Um, so like different canines all have very like similar uh, structures, and then like looking at rodents, they all have very similar structures. Like for a while, I was drawing like a whole bunch of different squirrels and like groundhogs and ground squirrels, and like yeah, they all look basically the same with like some small variation to them. Uh, so I find, like, the more different animals I try to draw, the better I get, like, at animals overall. Or at least, like, animals within, like, the same genus. Is it genus? I can't remember which step it is. Anyways. Right, so I get better at drawing animals on a whole, and then the different ones I work on... I guess, like, it gets easier to see the differences as well as the similarities. So, like, when I was drawing these, like, wolves and koi wolves and stuff, I was like, okay, coyotes have, like, really thin faces and, like, um, big fluffy ears where wolves have, like, smaller eyes and, like, bigger faces just because they're, like, bigger animals um, and they have smaller ears and stuff. So, yeah, it's been... it's interesting, man. <laughs> At least I hope it's interesting to me. I'm like, yes, all these like different visuals are so cool. But maybe like someone who doesn't care would be like, it's a dog, who cares? But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Why am I shaming myself? Ursula, come on. <laughs> so wolves and coyotes are super cute. <laughs> so how do wolves and coyotes fit into Nine Point? Well, Nine Point, like I said, all the species in it are based off of Canadian wildlife. Um, so the main, the, the main empire that rules over the land is like a bunch of cats and they live in the cat patrol, um, which is like in the center of the country and they are mean and terrible and horrible. And then, um, further and farther away from the, the cat patrol, there are, um, woods and meadows and prairies and like tundras and big forests and stuff um and that's where a whole bunch of like other wildlife lives um far away from the cats because they hate the cats and the cats hate them <laughs> um all right so wolves um tend to hang out like well wolves are kind of all over because we based a lot of like um I mean, if we're basing, like, the species off of Canadian wildlife, we base, like, the climate and the the different areas off Canadian uh, climate and environment and stuff. Um, so there's, like, wolves kind of all over, but, like, they there's wolves in the tundra, there's wolves in the forests. Um, you'd have to ask Bones more about that, because he did all the world building, so he knows more than me. I just know, like, the Spark Notes version, because <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, I'm beginning to design, like, the different characters, um, so, like, I'm sure I'll figure it out more as I go into it. Anyways, um, so wolves are kind of all over the place, and then coyotes are as well, but they tend to, like, hang out closer to the, to the cats, because they like to steal stuff from the cats. I mean, not all of them, but one of the characters, Dusty, He's a, he's a coyote, and he, he will steal the heck out of those cats. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's Nine Point. Um, also, so like, it happens later in the video, but you'll see me try to draw like how wolves compare to coyotes once they're like anthropomorphized, um, because I need to know how, how big how big they are in comparison to each other. Um, and Bones actually did this, like, crazy height chart. It's sitting in our living room right, right now. Like, he put a bunch of tape on the wall and, like, wrote down the heights of different animals <laughs> so that I have, like, a good comparison to, like, figure them out and how to draw them. Um, so wolves are, like, god, I don't know, they're, like, eight, eight paws tall or something, which is, like, as tall as our doorway. And then, like, um, coyotes are, like, a couple heads shorter than that. So yeah, I was amazed at like the difference between how big wolves are and how big coyotes are. I was like, aren't they all cute canids? Aren't they the same? But they are not. So <laughs> the more you know. Um, but yeah, Bones has gone crazy with the world building in Nine Point. Like, he, like I said, he built a height chart. He made a map. 
he mapped out like where all the different species are like not just like where the important characters are like every single species and like where they live what they eat <laughs> um and it's all based on like actual research like we tried to make up as little about like the ecology and the the environment and like animals as much as possible um because we wanted it to be super accurate. I mean, considering our the magic system is based off like the fur color, we ha and so like we had to look into like the genetics of like cat fur color. So like we we're like we got to make sure that this is correct. <laughs> um, but it's been fun. It's been like it's cool to like limit yourself because you get like more creative ideas the more you do that. Um, but a lot of that's been on bones. I'll be getting into it soon as I like work more on the visual development. Um, currently I'm still learning how to draw the different animals and, like, figure out how they look and, like, what their, you know, what their living spaces are like, um, what are different areas of the map, like, what do they look like, figuring out set pieces. The visual development stuff is in very early stages right now. What else is there to talk about? Um, oh, I have a fursona. <laughs> um, I actually had a really fun time at TCAF, uh, last week. Um, cause I went to the sparkler mixer and I met some really cool people and we sat around drawing each other's fursonas and it was really fun. <laughs> so my fursona is a, a calico cat, of course. They are my true love. Um, so a calico cat, um, who is also a wizard <laughs> and instead of orange fur, she has pink fur. And the calico spots are all shaped like hearts. So that is me. That is me at my core. Um, and Bones also has a fursona. And he's mad at me because I never draw it. <laughs> he's been asking me for like years to draw his fursona. But I haven't. Anyways, so his fursa fur fursana, his fursona is called Calamity from Space. And it is an otter that is, that is teal. And has four eyes and came from outer space. So there we go. Those are our fursonas. Um, uh, TM, do not steal. Um, but I actually need to draw these. Because, like, talking about them, like, oh, that's so cute. I need to draw our characters having fun. Um, but who has time when you have to draw wolves and coyotes and how cute they are? I'm a little surprised my fursona wasn't, like, a wolf or something. Considering, like, wolves got me into furries. But... Like, I can't say no to a cat. I, f I love cats so much. <laughs> um, I used to joke that I'd, like, literally cry over cats, but I have literally cried over cats. Like, I will be looking through, like, Instagram or something, and then a really cute cat video will come up, and I'll just tear up, and Bones is like, oh my god, not again. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's where I'm at. <laughs> Uh, Bones and I also got into Flight Rising recently, which is, like, a cute dragon game that's, like, Neopets, but I didn't understand Neopets growing up, so I'm really into Flight Rising, because you can... Okay, so the way Bones sold this to me, because originally he was like, oh, I want to get into Flight Rising, because, like, he used to love Neopets, but he could never figure it out, neither could I, um, so then finding this, he was like, yes, it's everything I wanted as a child, I'm gonna play it. And he was like, Ursula, you have to play it with me. And I was like, no, I have work. I can't, I can't be distracted with games because I'm a workaholic. And then he was like, but you can make your dragons get married and have babies. And I was like, I am there. <laughs> That's how you convince me to play any game. If there's a marriage mechanic, I want to play it. Like, that's how I got into Fire Emblem. As soon as they introduced the marriage thing, I was like, try and stop me. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's me. <laughs> right, but I've been playing Flight Rising. Um, Bones has this whole strategy of, like, getting the proper jeans and stuff, like, super fancy jeans and, like, um, colors and stuff for his dragons. I'm like, this one's cute. I want it to marry this one. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've got the, the strategies. <laughs> um, yeah, I also love dragons. I mean, who doesn't? Dragons are super cool. But yeah, <laughs> I need to do more stories with dragons because they're adorable and cool and the best. Um, <clears throat> I used to get, so like my dad and my brother are super into Dungeons, 
my dad and my brother are super into Dungeons and Dragons um, growing up. And, like, I played it a little bit growing up. Um, I didn't get into, like, RPing until high school. But anyway, so we used to have, like, all the monster manuals and, like, player handbooks and stuff sitting around. So I used to just stare at all the different dragon types. And I was like, this is so cool. I want to draw all of this. But I was also scared of drawing it. Because, like I said, animals were scary. <laughs> for a little tiny artist, Ursula. But yeah, I'm also trying to, so like the more I draw like fantasy species, so say like griffins or dragons, I want to like, I just think it would be cool to like take a dragon and base it off like a specific type of like reptile or lizard or something. So like I have a blue tongue skink at home uh, named Aluminum who's adorable. And I was like, what if I made a dragon that was based off Al? Wouldn't that be cute? <laughs> um, but yeah, because it's like, um, because dragons and like, um, a whole bunch of other creatures, like, were very much just like a mash of animals that like people knew about. Um, so like, you know, like a, a snake with bat wings is like a, a dragon. Um, and have you ever seen those like those old drawings where someone would go to like, so like some, some nerd from like, England would go to, like, Africa and see a rhinoceros, and, like, they don't have anything like that back in England, and so he'd come back and try to describe what it was, and people would try to draw it without, like, knowing what it looks like, and, like, if you ever look at those drawings, they're super cool and weird, because they look kind of like animals you've seen, but they're not real, um, and so, yeah, that's kind of, like, how I feel about dragons and stuff, where I want to try doing stuff like that, where... Like, base it off a real animal and then see where you get. Because <laughs> um, I think you can come up with some really cool designs. Not that, like, traditional dragons and how they're drawn isn't cool. Because um, I still love those. But yeah, I just thought that would be a fun challenge. And it would probably teach me how to draw, like, different reptile species. Because um, there's so many species and they're all so cute. <laughs> I want to hold them. Um, except not all of them because it's not good. But, yeah, wolves and coyotes. Did you know that there's coyotes, like, in cities? They're just super stealthy. Like, I watched, like, a little documentary thing about how, like, there are coyotes that just walk around, like, suburban neighborhoods, like, looking for food and, like, wandering around and stuff. And they're just so good at hiding that people don't notice. Like, they could be walking around your backyard. Um, and this is in Canada. Probably happens a lot in, like, California, too, I think. Um... But yeah, and like they have like little dens in people's backyards full of like coyote pups. And I was just like, oh my god, that's adorable. Um, and I guess it makes sense because coyotes are like, they're pretty small, especially compared to wolves. So it makes sense that they could like get around in the city and like really adapt. Um, but yeah, fun animal facts. <laughs> um, also, when I was researching like wolves and coyotes, have you ever seen a wolf puppy? Because they're so ugly and adorable. Because, <laughs> like, you see a wolf and you're like, oh my gosh, you're so majestic and, like, beautiful. And then you look at the puppy and you're like, what are you? <laughs> you're so cute. <laughs> um, <laughs> the thing is, like, all baby animals kind of look like the old man versions of animals. Like, my dogs were potatoes when I got them. <laughs> like, they had this crunched little faces and, like, the tiny snouts and, like, the little eyes that can hardly open. So, like, yeah, they all look like little, little ugly old men when they're babies. But that's what makes them so cute. I always find in these big, long videos, because I'm still getting used to them, that I run out of topics. Like, I wrote a huge, long list of, like, things to talk about, and then it only fills, like, 20 minutes. So what's the most challenging thing I found about learning how to draw furries and animals? Well, I think, well, the hardest thing about animals is, I guess I kind of have to unlearn a lot of things because I have this like image of what animals look like in my head. Um, and then when I sit down to draw them, I'm like, oh, that's not how the leg works. <laughs> um, so it's a lot of like unlearning, like weird ideas that have gotten in my head and really focusing on just the forms. And then ensuring that, like, species look different from each other. For example, like, a koi wolf has to look different than a coyote because there are differences. So that's the hardest part about animals. Um, when I started out drawing furries, I had a lot of trouble with, like, figuring out the legs. 
like the digigrade legs where they stand on their toes um, and not on their like their flat feet like a human does. Um, so that took me a long time to figure out, but as soon as I like I had it down, I was like, okay, I can apply this to a whole bunch of animals. Um, but it was also interesting to learn that like a lot of species are also plantigrade, so like the flat foot human thing. Um, like I think badgers and bears are plantigrade. So I was like, dang, this is cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, the with furries, it's really hard to get like the different species to look different. Um, because a lot of animals do look really similar. For example, like getting a like a coyote to look different from a wolf, or a raccoon to look different than like I don't know, um, a dog or something. <laughs> um, raccoons, it's a little hard because like they do have the kind of longer snout, um, and they're like their bodies are shaped very differently. But I think I think part of it comes from like I'm I draw. I draw a lot of cats, uh, because a lot of the characters in Nine Point are cats. So then when I switch over to, like, say, a raccoon or something, where they look... Okay, they don't look like cats at all, but they're similar to cats in that they have, like, kind of pointy ears and, like, little, little triangular faces. Okay, they don't look like cats, but sometimes I draw them like cats. So that's, that's the struggle, <laughs> is just keeping, keeping the species apart and not letting them blend in together. Because I really want them to look different from each other. I don't want them to all look like wolves with, like, different fur patterns painted on top or something like that, or have them all look like cats. Um, yeah, that's the dream. <laughs> but it's really hard, because I do find that they start to blend together after a while. So I find what helps me a lot is just to have references open while I'm drawing, like, the the animals or the character design. Um, and just figuring out, like, oh, okay, so this is, like, this is what a raccoon looks like as I try to draw a raccoon. Because what I have to do is I have to learn how to draw the animal, and then I have to learn how to draw the character that looks like the animal, and then I have to draw several more of the same animal into different characters that all have to look different. <laughs> so if I have like five raccoons, they all have to look like raccoons, but still look different, which is really tough. So I find the more you like study an animal and look into it, you start to see like, if you have two wolves side by side, you start to see like, oh, so this is this wolf has, like, a longer snout. This one has, like, taller ears or something. So you start to see, like, differences. But at first glance, it's really hard. <laughs> You're like, they all look the same. Wee! <laughs> um, one thing I'm not looking forward to... Okay, I am kind of looking forward to it. But it's new and scary. So I have to learn how to draw, like, all the fauna and flora of, of Canada. So, like, I have to learn how to draw all the different plants and trees and flowers and bugs, <laughs> and birds, um, and what's the word? Ungulates? Ungulates, so like deers and stuff. Because like in Nine Point, only the, the, the mammals that aren't like hooved, they all are like um, sentient like beings, whereas like, you know, like the deer and cattle and stuff, um, and goats, they're all, they're all still animals, um, but, like, you know, the wolves and the cats and stuff, they get, they get to be, like, walking, talking. But yeah, so I have to learn how to draw all those species, too. I'm mostly nervous about the plants, because I never got into drawing plants, either. Um, I've drawn the occasional flower for, like, a, like, a still life study. Um, but yeah, not really in detail, so I'm a bit nervous about making different trees look different, <laughs> and populating, like, an entire scene with different plants. Um, so I haven't tried it yet, so I don't know how well it'll go, but I imagine the starting... The starting of it is probably the hardest part. Um, everything else should hopefully fall into place the more I get into it. Um, I find that happens with a lot of stuff where I will be working on it um, and really afraid to like start working on it. Like, um, cause that's how I felt about furries and drawing animals, right? Cause before I knew how to draw them, I was like, these seem really complicated and scary. And then I started drawing them and I was like, oh, I get it. I can apply these rules to a whole bunch of different things and it makes more sense now. And like, yeah. <laughs> um, so I think, yeah, I just got to get over my fear of 
doing something new and scary. Um, and just realize that it's not scary and that it'll be fine. <laughs> Oh, and then once I learn how to, like, actually draw the forms of everything, I have to color it all. Because <laughs> it's a full color comic. But that's okay. It'll be fine. I'm very excited to, like, level up my skills drawing plants and animals and learning how to color stuff and paint. Because um, I I know as an artist, I rely... I, as an artist, I know I rely really heavily on um, my line work. Um, and don't get me wrong, like, I love stuff that's, like, very line-heavy, um, and it's a style I want to use in a lot of my comics, because it's, it's one of the, the, not genres, but it's, like, a style of art that I really enjoy, so I want to keep using it, but I think it also hinders me from, like, learning how to paint stuff and how to use color effectively, because I can rely really heavily on my lines. Um, so this comic is really going to teach me how to rely only on color, and that's spooky, but exciting. So yeah, I think that's all I have for today. Um, don't forget, if you're interested in the Kickstarter for the Magpie, please go check it out. There's a link in the description down below. If you have any questions, or if you'd like to request a video topic, um, please, please leave a comment. Um, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos about drawing animals, making web comics, writing web comics, all that good stuff. Um, so yeah. I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye!